Welcome to this brief scientific podcast. Uh, my name is Alexander Goodfriend, and I'm joined here by Richard Chu. We're going to give you a preview of a recent paper that appeared in Hepatology. Efficient and equitable recruitment into clinical trials using the PREDICTI algorithm. This is joint work with collaborators in multiple institutions. Richard, would you like to take it from here? Sure. Thank you so much, Sasha, for the introduction. And uh, yeah, we can go ahead and get started. So before I introduce our novel recruitment methodology, I'd like to provide some context on hepatitis C virus or HCV. Um, as we validate our methodology on a simulated HCV vaccine clinical trial. So HCV is an RNA virus transmitted through blood contact, and over 60% of all new HCV infections in the US are attributable to sharing syringes and other drug paraphernalia. This represents the major risk factor for contraction of HCV, and thus people who inject drugs, or PWID, are the population most at risk for HCV. Roughly 1% of the U.S. population is currently infected with HCV, according to recent estimates. And despite over 40 years of research, there is still no vaccine available, partially owing to the diverse genome of the virus, as well as the difficulty of carrying out clinical trials of vaccines. Next slide. Um, in the design of clinical trials, there are really two main issues that we hope to address with our recruitment methodology. Our first goal is to reduce the required sample size needed for a clinical trial to reach adequate power. It is noted that up to 86% of clinical trials do not reach their recruitment targets within their originally envisaged uh, timescale. And considering that recruiting participants to a clinical trial can be an expensive and time-consuming ordeal, reducing sample size would provide valuable benefits in the feasibility and cost of conducting a trial. Our second goal is to ensure that the recruited cohort of the clinical trial reflects the target population of the vaccine or experimental agent being tested. In this study, we target demographic characteristics such as race, sex, and age, although in practice this could include other factors such as genotypes. Being able to actively pursue equity in trial recruitment is important considering multiple studies which show inadequate recruitment of minority populations into clinical trials, as well as calls by the NIH and FDA to promote equitable recruitment in new trials. Next slide. So classical randomized clinical trials achieve these goals by um, recruiting from broadly high incidence populations, such as PWID, while performing only as needed qualitative targeting for equity targets, which may also include extension of the trial. Sample size requirements are set beforehand based on incidence estimates, and interim analyses may be performed if desired. Our novel recruitment methodology, which we call the Predictive Recruitment and Enrichment Method Balancing Demographics and Incidence for Clinical Trial Equity and Efficiency, or just PREDICT-D for short, improves on this uh, classical uh, recruitment methodology by implementing a predictive model and scoring system that improves the incidence of the recruited cohort, thereby reducing required sample size, while simultaneously improving the demographic representativeness of the trial cohort. Our dynamic scoring system for candidates, which takes into account infection risk and demographic constraints, ensures that both factors are considered in recruitment, and allows weights to be changed to gradually place a greater consideration on demographics or incidents as the trial progresses as needed. PREDICTI also allows for early termination of recruitment if adequate power is achieved before the a priori sample size estimation is reached. For a more detailed uh, explanation and more information on our PREDICTI methodology and simulations, please see our full paper in hepatology. This figure details the demographic composition of our recruited cohort using conventional recruitment methods compared to PREDICT-D, averaged across 10,000 HCV vaccine trial simulations that we performed. The graphs marked under subsection A represent the simulations where the target population was Chicago susceptible PWID, 
Well, um, the subsection B represents the simulations where the target population was a more arbitrary balanced population, which we used to sort of test the demographic matching capabilities of Predictee. In each graph, the first column represents the target population uh, demographic composition. The second column represents recruitment via um, drug sharing networks, which is conventional recruitment. And the third and fourth columns represent Predictee. As you can see, Predictee shows a marked improvement in terms of demographic representativeness compared to conventional recruitment, which is especially, uh, especially noticeable in the maximally balanced population under subsection B. When used in a situation where Chicago's susceptible PWID is the target population, Predictee is able to easily correct for the underrepresentation of non-Hispanic Black candidates, which is seen in conventional recruitment, which is a major issue uh, seen in the literature. Next slide, please. This table details the improvement in incidence and corresponding sample size um, uh, seen using Predictee. As seen in the previous figure, Predictee was able to adjust to demographic constraints. Simultaneously, as seen in this table, Predictee is also able to reduce the required sample size. Compared, uh, compared to conventional recruitment, Predictee reduces the required sample size almost two to threefold, depending on the specific predictive model being used. At the same time, Predictee may actually reduce the re uh, screening requirement needed to achieve the required sample size compared to conventional recruitment based on an estimated refusal rate of 15% and 10% of each Predictee badge being recruited. For additional details on our results and methodology, please see our full paper. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. I have a couple of questions to you. Can you tell us a little bit about the model? How was the predictive model built and what kind of model is it? Yeah, so we use survival analysis models to predict the probability that a candidate would be infected by the end of a given trial period. Um, so one model that we used was a Cox proportional hazards model, which is a traditional survival analysis model. And the second is random survival forest, which is a machine learning model. Um, as seen in our results, random survival forest did result in a better um, incidence and sample size data. Um, while also resulting in you know, significant improvements to uh, demographic constraints. Um, in our simulations that we ran, we trained these models by using 20% of our Chicago PWID data, while we used the remaining 80% um, as the recruitment pool for our simulated trials. Let me ask you another question. How would somebody use uh, the predictive methodology to run a trial uh, for example, a hepatitis C vaccine trial uh, in another site, not in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, you know we verified our methods using a simulated HCV vaccine trial, and um, thus the methodology is easily applied in real practice to an HCV vaccine trial. So how that would be done is um, ideally you would have existing trial site data with which you can train a um, Cox or random survival force model. And then um, the remainder of Predictee methodology would involve um, cycles of batch recruitment, whereupon you um, screen potential candidates for the trial um, using a questionnaire of some sort. Questionnaire responses would be fed into your trained model and um, that would output a uh, risk of infection by the end of a trial period. That risk of infection combined with demographic constraints allows you to score candidates and recruit the top scoring candidates into the trial. Um, this cycle of, of batch recruitment would repeat until um, you, know, you reach your required sample size. Understood. Can you talk about some of the limitations of the methodology and how would somebody overcome them? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so none of our results in, in our simulations took into account the effect of attrition of candidates within the recruited trial cohort, um, since there's just not enough existing data on attrition to accurately capture that effect. 
Um, and this may be an issue since it has been shown that there is more attrition among higher risk PWID, which Predicti targets. However, if Predicti is still able to achieve its sample size and demographic benefits while increasing the screening requirement as a result of the effect of attrition, um, this is still beneficial since recruiting a candidate to a trial is much more expensive than screening additional candidates. So we believe that um, our results still show that Predicti um, is able to um, you know, offer some benefits in terms of sample size as well as demographics, even in a real world scenario. Thank you very much, Richard. Yeah, thank you so much.